I'm continuing my reading here, and what I am doing in this series is I am reading through the entire standard works of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This consists of the Bible, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and of the Pearl of Great Price. I am reading in a chronological order according to events, not according to publication or volume, so I will be skipping around a little bit as I move along. Right now, I am in the Book of Job. This is chapter 16. Job bewails against the wicked who oppose him. Though even his friends scorn him, he testifies that his witness is in heaven and his record is on high. Then Job answered and said, I have heard many such things. Miserable comforters are ye all. Shall vain words have an end? Or what emboldeneth thee that thou answerest? I also could speak as ye do. If your soul were in my soul's stead, I could heap up words against you and shake mine head at you. But I would strengthen you with my mouth, and the moving of my lips should have assuage your grief. <clears throat> though I speak, my grief is not assuaged. And though I forbear, what am I eased? But now he hath made me weary. Thou hast made desolate all my company, and thou hast filled me with wrinkles, which is a witness against me, and my leanness rising up in me beareth a witness to my face. So Job is again just kind of getting a noise. Look, you're not comforting yeah, I, I, I understand what you're saying, and I could say the same thing. But I wouldn't, because there is no comfort in these words. Verse 9. He teareth me in his wrath, who hateth me. He gnasheth upon me with his teeth. Mine enemy sharpeneth his eyes upon me. They have gaped open me with, my, with their mouth. I'm <clears throat> sorry, they have gaped upon me with their mouth. They have smitten me upon the neck, upon the cheek reproachfully. They have gathered themselves together against me. God hath delivered me to the ungodly and turned me over into the hands of the wicked. I was at ease, but he hath broken me asunder and hath also taken me by the, my neck and shaken me to pieces and set me up for his mark. His archers compass me round about and cleaveth my reins asunder and doth not spare. He poureth out my gall upon the ground. He breaketh me with, bre with breach upon breach. He runneth upon me like a giant. I have sewed sackcloth upon my skin and defiled my horn in the dust. My face is foul with weeping, and on my eyelids is the shadow of death, not for any injustice in mine hands. Also, my prayer is pure. O earth, cover not thou my blood, and let my cry have no place. Also now, behold, my witness is in heaven, and my record is on high. My friends scorn me, but my eye poureth out tears unto God. Oh, that one might plead for a man with God, as a man pleadeth for his neighbor. When a few years are come, then I shall go the way whence I shall not return. So I will say this, uh, this defiled my horn in the dust. Uh, a Hebrew idiom meaning to cast my strength away, to take my strength away. So, Job is again bewailing his sufferings. You know, breach upon breach, gnashed upon me with his teeth, all these things. Saying, it's just been one thing after another. No stop. These last, this last while has just been a constant one after another of just misery. But, and my friends, rather than coming and comfort me, are lecturing me about how, what a wicked guy I am because, there's no, because God wouldn't let me suffer like this if I wasn't evil in some way. But I know, I know what I have done. God knows it. The heavens have recorded what I have done, and I, I'm not guilty of these things. And I think this is where Job first starts getting his, uh, what, what will later be called Job's sin, what, what he does do wrong, the one thing he makes his mistake on. But it's in response to all the bombardments of his friends, and that he is, to a certain extent, praising himself he, he's showing a bit of a, a bit of his own pride
And in his pride, he is kind of questioning, not questioning God, but judging God. He's, he's in a sense chastising God, saying, why are you doing this to me? I am a good guy. I, I don't deserve this. It is unjust to do this to me. And that's kind of what he's saying. And we, we see this, and I think we get a little bit more of it later on. But that, that's the one thing Job does do. He says he's perfect, but under this immense pressure, all this suffering and all this pain, and his friends basically turning against him and saying, you must have done something pretty bad to have God do this to you. His own pride and his own, uh, I don't say, he's not conceited, he's not vain, but he is somewhat, he, he is proud of his own righteousness. And in the face of all this, almost as an attempt to keep his faith, he is building up his, he builds up his own, his own pride. And that is where he does fail to a, to a small extent. We will continue with his uh, response in the next chapter.